Welcome back, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Neverwinter Nights, The Shadows of Undrentide. And when we last left off, we had just rescued the guide. <laughs> and we also had a deacon. Hooray! Climb the boulder! It is the night camp, but we can rest here. The guide, apparently, does not rest. Zidane is like screw resting. Well, now we're going to escort the guide quite happily over. Hello. Aha! There you are, Zidane. You're a sight for sore eyes. I was beginning to think we'd have to wander back to Black Sands before long. Nope. I would not advise that, Madam Catriana. Neither would I, to be honest. It's good to have you back. None the worse for your experience, I see. That is true, and thanks must go to Barry for that. True enough. Well, Barry, you rescued Zidane just as I'd hoped you would. I suppose you'll be wanting a reward? Uh, getting Zidane back alive is reward enough. Oh, fair enough, I suppose. You're a kind man. You have my sincere thanks in return. And you, Zidane, are one lucky man. That reward was going to come out of your pay. Too kind, Madam Country. That I know it. Don't I know it? <laughs> I can find you something to do, cousin, if you've got enough spare time to be eavesdropping. Now then, I trust you're ready to move on, Barry? I have to do something first. I need to sell to you. So, are you ready to move on? Yes. No point in getting sand in our boots. Yes, I'm ready then. Good. Tarias, where's. The, what's the delay? Why aren't we moving yet? And here I was enjoying this relaxing stop of ours. I said, move it, lazy bones! Everyone on your feet! We leave now! The oasis of the green palm. Could be in some trouble, friend. The oxen have gone through the water rations much faster than expected. There is an oasis near here, but we have had some trouble with the tribe that guards it. Oh. You have a way of dealing with problems that I seem to love. I do! If you could just go and talk to the Bedeen, Maybe they would allow us to restock our water supplies. What kind of problems did you have with them? To us, it seemed a little simple thing. To allow our oxen to water to the water home. It was our first time crossing the desert, and we did not know the proper customs. They poops in water, maybe? Nothing so distasteful, no. The Bedeen considered the oasis something of a sacred place, however. It's tied to their local history somehow. We were never welcome back. No, we would never do such a thing again. We need this water, Barry. I will try. I'd like to make a purchase. Well, really, I just want to sell things. Let's see what I can sell. I don't need this. I don't need this. Hmm. Don't know about that. How much it weigh? Three pounds. I don't need this. Ring of resistance plus one, eh? Diamond, don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Still holding on to that slot, tongue, it would seem. You want Deacon? I'm not going to reprimand him. I've been told that if I reprimand him, I'm in serious trouble from someone. Okay. We're using a ring of animal friendship right now. A ring of universal resistance would probably be better. Plus one. Hold on to those. I'm just pretty much selling things, organizing my inventory, you know. That sort of guff. That is a good weapon. It is only a pity we do not use halberds. 
I see you have returned. It's up for 900. Alternatively, five lightning bolts is pretty. Nah, money. Money! We all need money, don't we? So, uh, we need to deal with the Bedeen. Come on, Deacon. seem like a nice friendly folk. Come on, little kobold. We'll be fine. God, this place is windy. At me. You cannot win. What? Where's all the water? Deacon sees no water nowhere. Zombies? Now we're getting somewhere interesting. Greetings to you, Mr. Ranger. You have come to the Oasis of the Green Park in a time of great danger. I'm afraid there is nothing here for you other than death. The curse of undeath. Where are these zombies coming from? A powerful creature, an ancient foe of my people, has once again arisen. He has taken our water, destroyed the Temple of the Morning Lord, and sent his undead minions against us. Oh, you said creature? Wait, Deacon gets out notes. He got to write this all down. His minions drag the corpses of my people down to his tomb, where they bring them back to life and send them to fight us. Our numbers dwindle as his grow, and without even water to sustain us, we shall soon fall. Why do these things always happen to me? <laughs> We do not have any reserves of water. No water at all. The creature has dried even the water in my canteen, such as his power. I, as I too need water, it seems our lives are intertwined. If you are completely out of water, then you are correct. Very well. Even though this tale is not normally told outside the Bedeen, I suppose it is only fair that you know of the cursed creature who hunts us both. Oh, goody! His name is Tekel Garas. The legends passed down from father to son for ages in our tribe tell us that Kelgaras hails from an age long past. <laughs> the time of the Netheril Empire, he was an evil necromancer and disciple to the god Jurgal. Jurgal. Tell me about Jurgal. In the time of the Netheril, Jurgal was a powerful god of evil and darkness. It is said his power has diminished in this age, if he even exists at all, though Kelgaras remains as powerful as ever. <laughs> It is said that Kel Garas uses, used the power offered to him by Jagal and attempts to gain rulership of the Empire itself. That is how he became what he is now. And did he rule the Empire? He tried, though he ultimately did not succeed. There were many who sought to rule the Empire in that age, but Kel Garas had many rivals with powers that paralleled his own. Because he lacked the powers to defeat his rivals in life, Kel Garas sought powers through death, and he might find a way to become a supreme ruler the nether east. He became a lich. That sounds like bad news. Old Master once tell Deacon story about dragon that do that. Old Master say he look terrible without skin. Those are Draco liches, and you do not want to mess with Draco liches. The horror of the undead was far beyond their appearance, little one. Gelgaras became a creature of death, gaining the abilities of a supernatural plus attaining all the power he held in life. He did not, however, Anticipate the reaction of his arrivals to his charge. Please change. Please continue. As part of Kelgaras has changed into the evil, undead form, his own soul had been trapped within a rod that he kept close at hand. But well, this rod could be used against him. Kelgaras's rivals discovered this fact and had the rod stolen. They performed a great rinding ritual upon it that drove Kelgaras deep into the earth and imprisoned him there. Why would his rivals drive and why did they not just destroy him? Kelgaras's immortal form was protected by the power of Jagal himself and not so easily destroyed. 
Even the great power wielded by the mages of that age could not contain him in the end. And then, after Kelgaras had been imprisoned for centuries, the Empire fell and its magic vanished. The binding that held Kelgaras was broken, and he was once again free. Uh-oh. He recovered the rod and then built an elaborate tomb in which he planned to rule. In the end, it was my own people, the Bedeen, who stopped Kelgaras from succeeding. At only a great cost. What cost was that? When the Badin first battled Kelgaras after his rising, he was all but invincible. Many thousands fought, only to be slaughtered by his magic or turned into ghastly undead. We were desperate for aid, or for anything that could stop this evil. And we found it, or rather one of my ancestors did. What did he find? A prison, built by the ancient Netherese, perhaps similar to the one Kelgaras himself had once been held in, I do not know. This one, however, still held its occupant. Uh-oh. It's called itself... Therim. It was unlike anything else my ancestors ever seen. It had great power, however. Power as great as that of Kelgaras. It was this power that my ancestors bargained for and was granted. A power that would drive Kelgaras back to his tomb and keep him there forever. Does this power still exist? It does. The power has been passed down in each generation of my bloodline. Should Kelgaras ever leave this tomb, I could perhaps even destroy him. Why only if he leaves his tomb? Ah, if only I could venture within myself to face the creature directly. Should we enter the tomb, however, our power is nullified by Kelgaras's magic, and we are helpless. Some have still tried. That does not sound like it ended good. The most recent was my own uncle, Ahmad, the last to hold the power before me. He entered and returned a fortnight later, a zombie himself. I was forced to slay him, my own kin, and banish his soul. There are many things I could brave, stranger, but on death, no, not that. Anything but that. Alas, our time grows short, and I am sure Kelgaras knows this. I am the last of my own blood, and the power that is handed down to me has been waning ever since Kelgaras' own power grew. Why the shift in power? Just my power beginning to fade, I voyage from distant prison my ancestors have found to speak to the same Fairim if it still existed. It was dead. How it was killed, I never found out, but I can only assume that its death has caused its power within me to fade, and at the same time allow Kelgarasis to increase. There is no sign of who killed it. I assume that with my creature's death, my power will fade until I am normal. So, how do you propose we defeat Kelgaras? We must first destroy his body. It is neither an easy task nor will it be permanent. Kelgaras is immortal after all. The source of his eternal life lies within the rod he holds. According to legends, whoever recovers the rod can place it on the altar of the Morning Lord. And Lathanda will destroy its power, for none hate the undead more than him. The rod's destruction will end Kelgaras' existence forever, and only that can restore water to the oasis and give us hope for survival. That's all my questions. Uh, I must be going. You must recover the rod that binds Kelgaras to this mortal plane. Only when it is destroyed on the altar of Lathanda will we truly be free of his evil. Before you face him, I would first suggest you enter the crypt by the oasis. It is a burial place of Al Rashid, my distant ancestor who was the first to gain the power to fight Kelgaras. My ancestor's weapon lies within, very effective against the undead. Legends say it failed him in the end and holds no power when wielded by those of our blood. That's why we buried it with him. Oh, Deacon, that of your blood? That is true. The defense, little one, but I would sooner take heart should my ancestor's weapon find its way into the hands of your master here. You are not of our blood, obviously. It may be the weapon that would work in your hands, and I have little doubt Al Rashid would gladly forgive the intrusion if it meant the weapon the death of Kelgaras. The shifting sands are ever treacherous, but I trust it must be placed somewhere. I beg you, do not fail us, Wanderer. Loot! That loot has been staring me in the face the entire conversation. Annoyingly. So, um, liches! Pretty much we're fighting a lich. That is never encouraging. So, when we come back, folks, we will continue to deal with, um, well, the Lich. Until then, folks, until then, I'll catch you later. I'll see you then.